You are looking at the film gate of this tiny, portable, 35mm projector. Pretty neat, right? Let's back up a bit. This projector, called an analysis projector, is designed to play 35mm film at a variable rate of 24 frames per second all the way down to 1 frame per second, with the option to even manually advance it one frame at a time. My name is Kyle, and keep watching to find out what this projector was made for, how it works, and why they are sought after. So why does this projector exist anyway? Based on my research, these projectors, called analysis projectors, were manufactured by NAC and were designed for, well, analyzing footage. The footage would be played slowly, filmed on 16mm or 35mm film, depending on which use case. As mentioned earlier, this projector is the 35mm model. I can give an example, which is specifically what this projector was once used for. A long time ago, the projector was owned by the Texas Department of Highways and Public Transportation for analyzing traffic camera footage. Apparently, officials would want to view frame-by-frame -frame images from traffic cameras by fast-forwarding and rewinding them to get the desired frames. As you could probably guess, this tool would have been very helpful in all sorts of fields and scenarios when digital videos did not exist. Today, however, they can serve a different purpose for us film hobbyists, but more on that in a moment. When I received this projector, it was already partially disassembled by the previous owner to convert it into a film scanner. You heard me right. This projector is a perfect design to allow for taking photos of individual frames of a film reel with the right modifications, a macro lens, a camera, and a light source, we can convert film to digital, as you can see in this rough setup. Luckily, the projector still works otherwise with all these modifications, so I can now show you how to use it and how it works the way it was supposed to. First, you need film on a core. This is a random trailer I have, and you need a core platter as well. In this case, my friend Thomas 3D printed me one, along with some cores, so that the film will stay in place on the take-up and feeding spindles respectively. This does not use a standard 35mm film reel. Next, you thread the projector. I'm not going to show you how it's done, but it's very straightforward and even marked on the projector. Next, we have this weird remote control. It is very bulky and heavy, but it does the job. You can see it has a frame counter, which is super cool and would have been very helpful when trying to find the same frame in the future. To turn on the projector, you just switch the power switch to the on position. From there, you just move the dial to the desired speed. If you want to freeze the frame, set it to the freeze frame mode, and then you can jog the projector one frame at a time with the switch. Here's an example of a preview of The Truman Show, and you can see the different speeds at which I'm playing it, including full, standard 24 frames per second. Notice the ghosting, that is the lines dragging on the screen. I am missing the shutter from this projector, which would cause this due to the lack of blanking. but. When using it as a scanner and taking individual photos, this would not be apparent. Lastly, for those of you who like reverse engineering projectors, I found how this projector works fascinating. For example, the film feed and take up advances with this little button is pressed and depressed. Basically, when it is pressed by film, that means that there is a large enough upper loop to continue. But if the button is no longer pressed, the take up and feed will advance until the button is pressed again. As for the actual intermittent assembly, the film intermittent assembly would be, by default, always advance at 24 frames per second as a normal projector would do. But when you decrease the frame rate, a solenoid would pull the intermittent back and out of the way at the rate at which you set the speed. For example, if you set the rate to one frame per second, the intermittent would move 24 frames per second, but only be in the forward touching the film position one of those 24 times. 
And to prevent ghosting when projecting, the shutter would have also been running at the sync speed, removing any signs of ghosting. And that's actually pretty much it and how it worked uh, compared to a normal projector. The electronics took care of the timing and such and still does. I plan to make another video where I make more modifications to better suit an automated film scanning rig. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or corrections, please comment below. Thanks and have a great day.